So welcome to the 13th reading of uh, Yngling Saga. And today I'm going to read on uh, King Rolf, Krakis Fall. Um, Dick, Dick. King Øystein and uh, Sølve Jut King. And finally the killing of uh, King uh, Yngvar. Um, so Rolf Krake, he was king, Danish king, and held seat at uh, Leire on uh, Zealand. Adil's son was called Eystein, who next ruled Sweden. And here Snorri used the word uh, in Norse uh, Sviavelde, as opposed to previously he's been using the word uh, Svishud. Shud is like a nation in the term as not like a formal nation necessarily, but a nation of people. So it's like the nation of the Sviar. Uh, as you would, uh, uh, not necessarily as a nation state. While Svia Velde, that's kind of the dominion or the kingdoms of the Svia. So it implies that uh, he, he rules kind of the dominions of the Svia. I call this Sweden, although um, I translate it with Sweden. Um, although uh, Sweden is, as it looks now, is a much bigger area than uh, what uh, King Adil's uh, son Eystein here would be ruling over. Anyway, Adil's son was called Eystein, who next ruled Sweden. In his days, Rolf Krake fell at Leire. At that time, kings were constantly ravaging Sweden both Danes and Norwegians. There were many kings that ruled great armies but had no land. To be fully counted as a sea king, it was held that one should never sleep under a suited roof and never take a drink by the hearth. And just to repeat, a sea king is a king without lands, but quite often it's a nobleman. So say a, a, a smaller king... Um, uh, has a certain amount of land, not like a small kingdom, and he has three sons. Then the eldest son will uh, inherit most of the lands, if not all, and the two younger sons will inherit, uh, you know, smaller fortunes and uh, a private, smaller private army, and uh, out they go to claim their own, and uh, they become uh, what is called sea kings. And uh, this was common in Denmark, Norway, at least. Um, and so Danish and Norwegian sea kings were ravaging Sweden. So they w and a sea king would never sleep under a suited roof and never take their drink by the hearth, for warmth of the hearth. So it was uh, a tough life. On Eystein and uh, Sølve Jut King. Um, or Jut. Uh, I know in English, in English you pronounce it uh, Jylland, Jutland, but the proper would be uh, Jutland. Actually, it's a uh, Jutland. It's an old, uh, ar the archaic form. It was probably pronounced Jut, but um, like in Jutland, Jutland, it comes from a Goth, Gut, Gothland, from the time of the Goths, perhaps. Sølve was a sea king, son of Høgne in Njarde. So uh, Njarde. Uh, is a uh, Nare in Namdal in uh, the northern parts of Norway. 
He was ravaging in eastern way. He also held lands in uh, Jutland, Jutland. He led his men to Svishul. At that time, King Øystein was visiting in a shire called Löfun. So Löfun uh, is uh, thought to be either uh, Lagunda in Sweden or uh, Löherad's parish in Lyhydra shire in the, in the same area. Uh, is what I've read, anyway. At that time, King Eystein was visiting in a shire called Löfven. There came King Sölve, unnoticed during the night, and surrounded the king's house, and burned him inside with all his heeded. Sölve then went to Sigtuna, and assumed the title of king, and asked them to confirm him. But the Sviar gathered an army, to protect the country from him, and there commenced a battle so fierce that it is said it didn't conclude until after eleven days. King Sölve was victorious, and he was king of Sweden for a long time, until the Sviar betrayed him, and he was killed. So says Schudolf. I know Einstein ended imprisoned. His life closed at Löfven, and the king, with Sviard, they say, by Jutish men, was burned inside. And the biting illness in the fire ship of the hillsides of Kelp on the protector raged when the strong timbered homestead ship full of seafarers over the Lord burned. So there's some really beautiful kennings in this uh, poem. Uh, uh, one that spread over uh, several lines is uh, the biting illness of the hillside of kelp and kelp as in uh, seaweed so this the biting illness of the hillsides of kelp this is uh, a kenning for um, fire and uh, a, a fire ship is a kenning for house The killing, the killing of uh, King Ingvar. King Eystein's son was called Ingvar, and he was then king of Sweden. He was a great warrior and was often with uh, worship. Because at that time Sweden was often attacked by armies, both Danes and men from the Eastern Way, King Ingvar made peace with the Danes and set out to wreak havoc in Eastern Way. One summer, he had an army out and went to Estlam, which is uh, more or less the areas of Estonia today, and ravaged there during the summer at the place called Stein. And this place I, I haven't seen, I can't really see, because it's such a Norse name and names... It's, uh, I haven't been able to locate it, if anybody knows where this Stein in Estland is. I'd be really happy if they wrote it in the comments. I haven't been able to locate it. Then came the Ester against him, so Estonians, with a large army and they held battle. The land army was so large that the Sviar could not resist. King Ingvar fell there and his army fled. He is mounted there by the sea in uh, Adalsysla. The Sviar went home after this loss. So says Schudolf, just before the poem. Um, Adalsysla is like, uh, means the mainlands and, uh, of Estland. And uh, everything east of the island, which is today called uh, Saramo in uh, Estonia. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, uh, was uh, they called it Ösel? This was uh, Adalsysla, and uh, the island of Sarma was uh, Ösysla, or the uh, you know the uh, lands of the island. And together they were simply called uh, Sysla or uh, Estland. So says uh, Schudolf. Word spread quickly that Ingvar of Syslakin had been slayed, slain, 
and the light-skinned by water's heart, the Estonian army the prince struck, and the eastern ocean for the Swedish chief, Gim's songs for pleasure sings. So a couple of kennings here in this poning. A water's heart, uh, this is a kenning for um, Island. And Gym here, he is a uh, Yulton. He's the father of uh, Gert, who is uh, married to Frey. Gym, he, uh, he uh, ruled over the oceans. On King uh, Plo Önen, Ingvar's son was called Önen. He was the next to take the kingdom in Svishot. So how the, how, now he's saying Svishod again and not uh, Sviavelia. I don't know how important it is, but I choose to translate it precisely. So in case, you know, it has some importance. He was the next to take the kingdom in Svishod. In his days, the peace was good in Svishod and he had amassed great treasures. King Ernen went with his army to Estland to avenge his father and went ashore with his army and ravaged far and wide through the country, collecting much plunder. In the autumn, he traveled back to Svishud. The years in Svishud were very good in his days. Of all kings, King Önud, Önun was the most liked. Svishud is a country of great forests, and there are such large wild areas that it takes many days to cross. King Önun put a lot of effort and expenses into clearing forests and cultivating the cleared lands. He also built roads over the wild lands, and they founded many forest-free areas around in the wild lands where great shires were established. Uh, the term here is uh, harad instead of uh, bygd. It's often translated as towns and villages, but a harad is also more of like an um, administrative unit in a hierarchical structure. And it can uh, encompass several towns and uh, villages. So uh, I've translated it with shire here. And they found many forest-free areas around in the wild lands where great shires were established. In this way, lands were established as there were enough people to build these towns. King Önen had roads plowed all over Svishod, through forests, marshes and mountains. And because of this, he was called Plow Önen. I'm translating in Plow. I really can't find a proper word in the Norse. It's Braut Önen. Braut is a little more like uh, you plowing snow but uh, it's it's just a little bit different than plow it's more like you can also if you force yourself through a forest you're braut braut you're um, braut in the braiting in the forest anyway plow is the closest i could find which is more or less the same meaning so plow earn because of this, he was called Plau Önen. King Önen had a house for himself, built in every great shire of Svishul, and traveled all over the country to visit. So yeah, next time we get into uh, Ingald Ill Ruler and uh, a lot more action actually. If you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe uh, so you can follow them. And uh, yeah, hope to see you for the next video.